G'day, g'day, and welcome to another episode of Kiwi Car Life. And a year and a half ago, I bought a Lexus ISF based on the second generation Lexus IS. It had a five liter V8, really engaging eight speed automatic, and it was able to power slide at a moment's notice. It was a brilliant car, and I absolutely loved it. But the whole time I owned it, a small part of me wondered, what would happen if Lexus took the first generation Lexus IS and turned it into an ISF? And today we're going to find out. The first gen Lexus IS was sold all around the world and could be had with either a 118 kilowatt 2 litre inline 6 or 162 kilowatt 3 litre inline 6. However, in Japan it was sold as the Toyota Altezza and was also available with a high revving 2 litre inline 4 and a 6 speed manual which is what this car started as. In theory, the concept is brilliant. 8,000 RPM, four cylinder screamer of an engine with 154 kilowatt, a slick six speed manual transmission and a compact lightweight sedan with rear wheel drive and an LSD. Almost like a rear wheel drive Accord UOR or a Toyota E30 M3. However, every single one I've driven has left me feeling extremely underwhelmed. The steering is vague and slow, the engine just feels hopelessly gutless and sounds ear-piercingly horrible, the gears are really long, the electronic throttle is laggy and makes banging gears and rev matching without a lot of bucking from the drivetrain difficult, and I could go on. In my opinion, the cool gauges and rear-wheel drive layout are really its only selling point, and the CL7 Euro R is just a significantly more engaging car to drive. However, all the Altezza's issues can really be boiled down to the drivetrain. My ISF, on the other hand, was every bit as engaging and polished to drive as a Euro R, but with a glorious Lexus V8. So let's see what would happen if Lexus put a V8 in the first gen IS instead. The engine is a 3UZ FE out of a Lexus LS430. It's a 4.3 litre naturally aspirated double cam V8. But Lexus never put it in the Lexus IS. They only ever put it in the GS and the LS and it was only ever really paired up with an automatic transmission designed for luxury car purposes. But the owner bought the engine and then bought an Altezza to put it in and here we are. We have a 4.3 litre V8 in an Altezza making essentially a first generation Lexus ISF. It's paired up with a five speed manual transmission that you would normally find paired with a 1JZ in like a Toyota Chaser or something and the rear differential is a bit of a parts bin special. The casing is from an IS300 but the internal LSD unit is out of a Subaru BRZ. Naturally it's had to have all custom engine mounts to get it to fit in here. It also has a custom pod filter along with a much more beefy radiator but everything else under the bonnet actually looks reasonably factory. The car also has teen coilovers to give it better ride height and better handling and some aftermarket Volk racing wheels. Normally I'm not a huge fan of two-piece wheels but on this I actually think that it looks really quite good. The interior really is no different to a standard Altezza. The cool thing with this one that I love is that it has uh, the facelift steering wheel with these little grey inserts here and the nice little 10 and 2 grips and I love the gauges that these cars come with. This one has the facelift gauges with the little blue dials just like a watch. Transmission feel on this car is really quite good although if you have the handbrake up you can't get into second gear. <laughs> the seats are nice and comfortable, they don't have like heaps of bolstering so I imagine on track you'd probably be sliding around a little bit but overall it's a comfortable place to sit, the build quality is pretty decent for a 90s car, the gauges look really cool and overall you can tell that it's a nice small compact sporty sedan just like an E46 3 series or a Cord Euro from similar generation, it's a really great place to sit. Driving the Toyota Altezza with a V8 engine aka the first generation Lexus ISF it's fast like really quick the steering is a little bit light I must admit it's a touch vague but it just goes and goes and goes man come over the crest here low kill I always forget that's there because it kind of looms up on you Three. oh it's so good to drive it's so unbelievably excellent limited slip diff so yeah oh it puts down power beautifully I love the sound of a Lexus V8 and it really is just like a manual ISF, it feels 
sporty. It feels like it'll be really, really quick on track. V8, just like the second gen one, but with a manual, sort of a bit more period correct with it being, you know, late 90s, pretty much everything high performance in the 90s was, was manual. And the downshifts, <laughs> unbelievable, man. And on the power. Oh, it's so fast. And and the thing is, like, what staggers me is that it feels, it feels like a factory car. It feels like the transmission's solid. All the gears are easy to find. There's no weird, like, lurching or sort of, you know, things you expect with, like, an engine-swapped car. It literally feels like this engine was meant to be in this car and meant to be paired with this transmission and differential, even though the engine, transmission, and differential never came in this car. And then, in my mind, the best part is, if you just want to cruise along the open road, it's still quiet, still comfortable, even on coilovers it rides well, at any moment you can drop some gears. It's so easy to just go bang into the next gear, you know, flip an insanely good car, up into fourth, bang, like just immediate shift, eh? I would totally own one of these, man. Just anything V8 and paired with a manual is unfreaking believable. Genuinely one of the best cars I think I've ever driven. It's so tight, like I mentioned, it just feels completely factory like it's meant to be. And overall, man alive, it is a cracking car to drive. So there we go, if you have a Toyota Altezza, immediately pull whatever rubbish engine you have in it out. Because this is much better. And I'll look forward to seeing you again. Next time, don't worry about that noise, that's nothing to worry about.